Rhonda Draculis here, RK3 Designs. And the project that we're doing today was um, out of necessity. I have one of my students who rodeos uh, needing a uh, auction item. So I told her I would make her a Lazy Susan and we're gonna do a wood grain today. Let's get started. I like to take my colors that I think I might wanna use. And what I do is I kinda of come off to the side and I see my color palette before I get started. So I'm gonna kinda of put some colors down here. That was a dark taupe. I know I want earth tones today. So I'm gonna start adding a few colors. That was a nutmeg. Um, let's see what my brown tone kind of lead me. Seems like the nutmeg may have a little much, a little too much pink tone. So I think I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna lean towards the dark taupe as opposed to, nope, that was not dark taupe. See, this is why you do this, nutmeg. So I'm gonna lean towards the nutmeg the leather brown. We're gonna do a little accent. Yeah, that'll be pretty. We'll do some accents with Kona. I know I wanna bring in a, kind of a rustic kind of look. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the aged rust. And then like always, I always add a little bit of black. And let's see what our dark walnut looks like. Okay, so now I'm kind of looking at my color palette. I do actually like the dark walnut a little better than the nutmeg. The nutmeg seems to have a little bit of a pinkish hue. So I'm gonna stick with the dark walnut. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I may even come in with a little bit of warm caramel. We'll kind of see how the project progresses. Okay, and what I've done is I've mixed up uh, some stone coat countertop epoxy, the regular epoxy, and I tinted it very tiny amount. And when I say tiny, I mean heavy on the tiny. Uh, and it is their brown opaque by Lumalite. So I really wanted to get a pretty brown, but I still wanted it to be a little bit translucent so that you'll be able to see those other colors that we're gonna be adding to it. So put that off to the side. I prep my board with Bare Paint and Primer in Ethiopia. So it's kind of a muted, taupey type color. And I know that I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit uh, more earthy tone browns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fog the edges of my board because when that epoxy breaks over, I really want to be able to see some more earth tones and not just that. So I don't want that to be the prevalent color that you see. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna very lightly fog. I'm not putting it really heavy. Just kind of lightly fogging that edge. Also that'll help as that epoxy rolls over that edge, it's gonna give the edges a little bit of color. All right, so I really like that. I'm gonna bring a little bit of color in the top. I'm having to use one tip for all my cans. Awesome. So now we're gonna come in with the dark walnut, just a little bit, and not around the whole piece. I'm only gonna do little sections of that. Good, and then I'll just come and fog a little bit of that color on there too. All right, cool. All right, so we're gonna just let that sit for just a couple of minutes and let it dry, and then we'll apply our epoxy. Okay, so we're back. I've let this dry just for a few minutes, and now I'm going to pour my epoxy. And I love this new brown that they sell. It's so rich, and you can use as little as you want if you just want kind of a transparent, almost like a dye. That's actually what it's called, is uh, opaque dye. 
So you can really get an opaque color or you can put just a tiny bit in there and get it very translucent. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna use my hand and we're going for a wood grain look today. So everything that we do is gonna be straight lines, striated, no curves. So I really wanna make sure I don't do my hand like this and get curves. We want everything straight lines. So I'm gonna take my hand, get those edges. And I, I really do like the fact that it is, it is a dark color, but it's a very translucent color. So I'm super excited to see how these colors are all gonna really meld together. Okay, so got that all leveled out. So I like to really keep my hands clean, isopropyl alcohol plain, before I grab any other tools. It just really helps to keep my tools clean and in working condition. I also wrap my tools, my torch and my heat gun with a plastic wrap, uh, press and seal. So this also, if my hands are sticky, it doesn't clog my button. Now I'm gonna torch out. All right, I really like this as a base color, really cool. Let's go ahead and grab a leather brown first. Let's just see how that works. See if we even like the color. And that's the really neat thing about this pattern is if you don't like a color, you can grab another one and kind of blend that one in. All right. Yeah, you'll be able to see that really well. All right. So I'm just gonna start adding color. I'm in not really worried too much right now about patterns. I just want everything straight. Now you can do it with your stick or you can get really bold and just put some lines across it. The key though is really working that paint down into the epoxy. The more you work it down, you don't want that paint just sitting on top. Really want that um, paint to, um, to really get down into the epoxy. All right, cool, I like that. All right, so let's go for some contrast. Let me try the nutmeg on first. Let me see if I like that. I do like that color. I think I had decided that I was gonna do nutmeg instead of the dark taupe. But I am gonna, I'm gonna see what that dark taupe looks like. All right, so the dark taupe gives me a little bit more of a lighter pink color. I just, I'm gonna stay away from that dark taupe. And I'm gonna come back with my nutmeg and I'm gonna add just a few lines. And you don't have to go all the way across. If you just want that nutmeg to be in a few spots, then just put it in a few areas. All right, cool, I like that. All right, I'm gonna come back in now. I'm gonna go a little darker and I'm gonna grab some dark walnut. No, actually, this is Kona. This is a really dark color and it'll get away from you quickly. So with your Kona, I would start off with a little bit on your stick. Make sure that's the color that you wanna bring in. I really do like that color. Then if you decide to go back in with a little bit more, you can spray it directly on there. I'm gonna be a little safe right now, and I'm only gonna put a little bit in there. All right, so right now I'm just laying down colors. I'm really not worrying about where this is going. I'm just trying to get some colors, get my base worked in there. I'm gonna come in with some dark walnut now. I really like a dark walnut. It really brings in a, a darkness without bringing in a black. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of dark. All 
And you can do your stick two ways. You can get different effects by going straight up and down, or you can kind of come over on its side and kind of work that in. And make sure you go over the sides. I really want that color to flow over the sides so it looks natural. Now, this is a preference. You can stop at any point. When you feel like you have enough color on that surface, you can stop. I really like to have a wood grain with a lot of color. So I'm gonna keep adding. I have a aged rust here and it's kind of a metallic color almost. It has just enough metallic that it wants to sit on top of the epoxy. Metallic reacts a little bit different than other paints. So you may wanna just practice with it a little bit so that you're aware of what kind of reactions you're gonna get using a metallic. And within the metallic family, you'll have different reactions. Some of the metallics are fast drying and they'll really sit on top of your piece and dry really quickly and almost give a crackle effect, which is a really fun look if that's what you're going for. This metallic almost seems to be kind of be spreading out a little bit, not sitting real hard on the top. Okay, well, I'm really liking these colors. I think I wanna come back in with a little bit more of the leather brown. Now this time I'm gonna come in with a very small brush. I mean, a, I'm sorry, a small stick. And I'm gonna get really tiny lines. And then I wanna come back with my big stick ever so often. Really pull that epoxy up. All I'm doing by switching back and forth is giving different effects so if I want some bigger striated lines, I can come back in with my bigger stick. All right, I'm really liking that. Okay, now I also have a really neat little tool. It's a Bondo spreader. And I actually cut very randomly. There's no uh, really perfect uh, cut lines, but this makes a really neat tool also if you would like to get some wood grains. So you can just take that and drag that through and get the same effect. You can lay down lines a little more. All right, so I am really liking this. I wanted it to be a very subtle piece. I didn't want it to be really hard white lines or a lot of contrast. I really like how it's blending these colors very softly. And I think I'm gonna come back with maybe just a little bit. I'm gonna add, I have some dark copper here. I like metallic. So I'm gonna try this dark copper. Ooh, that's a really pretty color. Oh yes. Now that's really popping. So I know I don't wanna add a lot. I want it to go over my edges. Yeah, I like that. And I'm gonna come back in. You know what, I'm gonna add just a little bit of the warm caramel. And the reason I wanna do this, I wanna bring in almost a rustic kind of Southwest look. So we're gonna see what this looks like. And I'm only gonna bring in a little bit. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna let these colors and these lines just sit for a little bit, see what happens. And after my epoxy starts to tack up just a little bit, I'm gonna come in with more distinct lines. And because my epoxy is set a little longer and it's starting to kind of get gelled, my lines are gonna be, uh, will wanna stay a little bit longer and not move quite as much. So we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I'm back. It's been just a few minutes, but what I wanna do is I wanna, 
really kind of capitalize on these drips and the epoxy that's dripping down. And I'm gonna use that to my benefit. I'm gonna take those, those drips and I'm just gonna run it through and make some really cool veins. Now, when you take epoxy and you run it as a vein, it actually will spread that vein apart. Again, I'm running everything straight back and forth taking these beautiful drips down here. And what's really neat is that these drips are gonna have some colors that are unique because of the colors that have already kind of mixed. Now you'll see there it kind of drips, so I'll have a drip here in the middle, like right there. All I can do is just take that, run it with my stick. Now if I start to get patterns here that aren't really a strie because they're starting to uh, fall over the edge. You can come back with your stick and you can bring it back to a, a striated look, striated look, depending on where you're from. All right, I really like this area right here. I've got some translucent color from my uh, original pour peekabooing through the spray paint. Now right here, I'm starting to get that metallic. Remember I told you it kind of sat on the top. So I'm really not wanting it to spread out quite so much. I'm gonna come in with a cone of brown. And because I wanna kind of break up this metallic, I'm just gonna kind of go in that area right there. I still like the metallic. I just don't want it to be as spread out as it's going. So I just want to kind of reel it back in a little bit. All right. Now I'm being very selective of where I want my colors now that it's starting to kind of set up and I see how the colors are now working against each other, working against my base tint. Now I'm able to kind of sit back and say, I really like where this pattern's going, or I want to add other features to this, maybe lighter, you know, even as even an accent color. This would be a great time to come in with an accent color, say turquoise, my favorite color. I'm not going to do that because I am donating it, so I don't know the um, the color of the house that it's going in. So I'm going to try to stay very neutral. But this would be a great time to bring in any kind of your accent color. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit another 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. And uh, we're gonna go back and we're gonna add a few more striated lines to get us a little more uh, distinct lines. And then we're gonna see if we're set up enough to do kind of a knot in it. Um, sometimes I like to wait even longer so that that knot really stays round. So let's see what we have. I'm gonna come in here with dark walnut. And I am gonna use a small stick and I'm gonna use a little bit of paint. I'm not gonna really go heavy. And now I just wanna start bringing in some more delicate lines. And you don't want it to look like a zebra. So you don't wanna come in very patterned. Like don't come in every half inch or every inch. You don't want a real hard pattern so that's why I'm taking these lines, softening them. There's an area maybe I want to highlight. I can bring them in. But again, everything is very soft. Okay, so let's see if we can get a, a knot. So again, I'm coming in with my dark walnut. I'm loading up just a little bit more paint on my stick and I'm just gonna kind of offset. I don't want that knot to be right in the middle of my piece. So I'm gonna kind of offset it a little bit and I'm just gonna put a little color down, work it in a little bit and then I'm gonna bring it off into have a tail. Then I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna let that set for just a little bit I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to bring me another knot down over here. 
run a tail. There. Now, I'm going to let that sit, kind of see what happens, see how it moves. And I even come back sometimes with a very, very tiny sharp, like a toothpick or something, if I really want to get detailed. But I have to wait till my epoxy has really set up quite a bit more before I can get detailed. Or what's going to happen is as the epoxy moves and self levels, it's just going to get bigger and I won't, I'll, I'll lose all my detail. So we're going to wait another, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It's about, oh, 72 here in my shop right now. If it were, say, 80, my wait time would be cut dramatically because it's warmer. But because it's a little bit cooler, taking a little bit longer for my uh, epoxy to set and get kind of at that stage that I want it. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so I want to add a few more knots, but I don't want them to be really big. So I'm getting a pencil. I really want to be detailed on this one. So I'm going to grab my pencil, bring it into some Add just a little bit of color and then run my edge out. All right, I kind of like that. I may add one more over here, a little one here, and run it out. And all I'm doing is just picking up paint from the table that was here. There, good. I think that's good. That looks a little more natural than just having the two. It looks a little more like a, a slab of wood. All right, so these other two are really kind of keeping their shape. I, I kind of like that. I do want to come in with a little bit lighter color. I think I might come in with my nutmeg. Get just a little bit of that nutmeg and come in with my pencil. Put a, just a little bit of a highlight in there. Not much, just a little bit. That's going to be a little bit lighter knot. kind of like that, actually. I'm going to surround it a little more. Okay, so this one's bleeding a little bit. I'll just kind of swirl it back in there. The two last knots that I did, I probably should have waited just a hair longer before I added color, but I kind of like how they're coming out. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. And I'm super picky about this piece because I'm donating it. So I'm actually not liking this one knot. It's moving a little more than I wanted it to move. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix it. So we're going to come in here with some different color paint. Uh, I'm going to come in here with some, let's see, leather brown. Actually, I'm going to come in here. Yeah, I'm going to do some leather brown. I'm just going to kind of work through that area where that knot was. Not too much. I don't want to get it really... Um, dirty, dirty that my colors by mixing them too much. But I, all I did was kind of take out that, that knot. You can't even tell it was even there. And I am going to add a little bit of a lighter color coming in with some nutmeg. Now that I know how my piece is moving, now I can decide where I want some lighter pieces. If you have a really large countertop that you're doing on this, you won't have to be as picky because you're taking this pattern and you're really stretching it on a very large surface. So your eye is not going to go to so many places at the same time. So keep that in mind. If you're doing a full size countertop, take everything we've done and really think about spreading it into a bigger area. So because mine is so concentrated on the small turntable, Lazy Susan, I'm really more, uh, I guess, picky about where my eye goes when I first look at it. Okay, well guys, I really like this. I like the colors that are in it. Uh, I like the contrast. I like the fact now my lines are staying where I want them to stay. And I think I am going to call it a day.
you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications, and join our newsletter. Go to our website, www.rk3designs. And guys, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.